So we'll get started. Um, we I had think out a moment this morning where I realized that um, Israel and the United States did not have the time change at the same time. Um, so thankfully, Rev Benny was available an hour earlier than he anticipated being available. Um, so uh, thank God, everyone. And I also share that because if you are in the United States and planning to meet with anyone in Israel, um, I would have loved a quick reminder. So I'm issuing that reminder for everyone um, to be careful because I don't think Google knows all of this information on its own. Okay, so um, with that, I want to welcome everyone who is here and just share just my, my enthusiasm and my excitement over having this event. Um, there are, so we of course are, everyone is welcome here. I know we've got folks, I think probably from all over the country, perhaps all over the world, um, to give some background of why this began specifically at Ohev Shalom. Well, the first thing I should say is I want to thank the Jewish Federation, our local Jewish Federation has been offering grants to synagogues um, to have Israel um, programming just to celebrate Israel 75. And so um, they have been, which is like a fantastic program. And so they provided us the funding to have this event. So I wanted to thank them, not just for the funding, but for really creating this, planting this idea um, with us that we could have some kind of this event. Um, and I also wanted to, to thank Ned, who is here. We worked together on preparing this um, and I'll say more about him in a minute. But first, I just wanted to sh share a quick word of background about why are we here? Um, specifically, why are we here through Ohev Shalom, um, which is a, we're a shul in Washington, DC, where I've been here for 10 years um, and we have never really talked about anything political um, in the United States and Israel. Um, our attitude typically has been, you know, these are not something that we should really bring into the shul space, especially it's DC, people know their politics, they don't need to talk about it at shul also. Um, but there's something that that has felt, I think, a, a bit different um, over the past few months. And that is, of course, that a lot of the recent developments in the government, um, and, and Ned and Rev, La, Rev Benny will talk more about that, um, have been really from specifically the religious community. And frankly, a lot of the sources of the controversy and challenges have been from the religious community. And so we did not create this event so that we could come and talk about politics for an hour. That's that's probably the farthest part of the goal of this. We created this event because we said, okay, we're an Orthodox synagogue, right? We're a group of religious Jews, and it is our you know counterparts um, um, in Israel who are often who are who've been a cause of a lot of the change, or certainly been in that image and. How can we, how do we understand this, right? Within our role um, as not just as not just Jews, as not just supporters of Israel, but really part of the, what would be under, I think most circumstances considered a similar community. And so that's really what we wanted to, to have Rev Benny here today to help us understand, which is what what is, what is going on on the ground over there? Um, how did this come to happen? And I think most importantly, how can we as religious Jews um, in the the United States and wherever else in the world um, we might be really relate um, to that and try to understand it. Um, you know, I think that that's typically a much more effective than just, you know, slinging shots at each other and, and you know, and, and that doesn't really engender any conversation or reflection. Um, and so that's really what we're hoping to get to today. Um, now, before I turn it over to Ned, I also just want to note, um, folks may have noticed that um, we that you are on mute um, and we uh, for a variety of reasons um, will continue to be on mute and if you have any questions um, please the chat will go to Ned and myself because we are um, the co-host so please um, just send the questions to us because Rev Benny will speak um, for a little bit and then we'll also have opportunity for questions um, now so I believe that is it for my introduction and I now I wanted to thank Ned Lazarus who um, hopefully those of you at Ohev Shalom know Ned is just a truly wonderful thoughtful amazing human being um, who is here in this context specifically um, with his sort of professional hat on because he serves as the a teaching associate professor of international relations at GW University and also an Israel Institute teaching fellow um, and those are the formal words where really uh, informally I would just say Ned is someone who has really dedicated his career and his life to studying um, the conflict and Israeli society and, and efforts to, to bridge gaps um, uh, um, and to create peace. And so I'm just really delighted that he is here with us today. And Ned, I will now turn it over to you. 
Um, all right, thank you, Ruth, uh, so much for the introduction. And um, I, uh, I uh, you know, think uh, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Lau, we're honored uh, to have you. You spoke to our congregation, uh, Ohev Shalom, a few years ago, and we drew inspiration from your teaching then. Uh, and we are, we're turning to you now for clarity and insight in uh, uh, a moment of crisis. Now, it's an Israeli crisis, of course, uh, uh, but as religious Jews in every way that Ruth just expressed, we are deeply connected to Israel and we are profoundly uh, concerned uh, by what we are witnessing in the present and what it may mean for the future. Um, when we say crisis, it's as if there's one crisis, but there are, in fact, uh, multiple crises that all seem to be escalating at once. Um, uh, but for for clarity, I, I, you know, I think we could name a few of them. The I, I, but the role of religious Zionists and the religious Zionist community in each of them is a, a question for us. And I, if you could, I hope you can address each of them in the short time we have. I don't want to talk too much because it's uh, that that time is short. Um, the first is something that I know you have addressed as the head of uh, a, a prominent uh, uh, synagogue, the Ramban Shul in, in Jerusalem for many years as the director of the 929 project, uh, bringing the Torah to uh, much of secular Israeli society uh, and in many other spaces, the Shalom Hartman Institute that you, that you are active in. Uh, this government features ministers, uh, many of whom are representing a party that calls itself religious Zionism, uh, whose hateful rhetoric uh, and radical policy agendas you, you yourself have criticized uh, frequently in the past. Uh, how do you see uh, this, this? Is this a watershed moment in which religious Zionism has really tipped into a, a much more radical uh, place and that these views are becoming mainstream for religious Jews? Thank you, Mel. First of all, thank you, Marat Ruth, to bring me here, all uh, your community, Oef Shalom. I think that uh, it's a privilege to talk with you, uh, even by Zoom, just to listen, to try understand the very, very cloudy situation in Israel that you, you try to understand who is who. And uh, Ned, you are starting with the religious Zionist party. And I want to say something about the Hebrew name of that party. If you, you correctly, you said the name is ha Tzionut ha Datit. Listen to the Hebrew words. It's using twice the letter hey, ha mean the hey in the beginning, ha Tzionut, and then the second word, ha, that it, mean what? When you put that letter in the beginning of your name, you say something very strong, mean that and not other option. Mean I am the, like the hey, hey idea, it's like the. I am the religious, the Zionist. I am the only alternative that you have in the world to keep that style of what we call Tzionut Datit, religious Zionist, mean if you want to be religious Zionist, you need to be just like me. You know, in Yiddish, it seems better when say it's a great chutzpah uh, to, to say that because it's actually throw out all other options. And when I'm saying other options, I'm talking about the whole kinds of modern Orthodox people who say, yes, I'm religious, yes, I'm a Zionist, and yes, I'm strongly against many, many things that you are trying to do. And where, where is the place of that modern Orthodox in the map of the, of the whole parties in Israel? So we should say truly, and truly, I, you, you will say if it's sadly or not, but many, many people I can say like me, like me mean uh, uh, with belief of uh, liberal values, trying to share the Torah with all, trying to open 
the inclusive way of life, trying to make a, a strong relationship with reform, with all other liberal uh, um, movements. Where is my place in the map? Should say very clear, my decision years ago was that I don't need any religious party. Mean for me, religious party, it's like living in a ghetto. Like close yourself in your very intimate place and care about your very sector needs. Mean you, you're thinking like minority. You're thinking like a very, very close group or if you want close a, a club and you say, I care about the members in my club. I need my budget to the schools, to the, if you want, to the synagogues, to everything. It's all about budget. It's all about how much I can get from the, the whole budget of the, of the states to my very, very limited sector. And that is the way of the ultra-Orthodox, what you call the Haredim parties, if it's the Ashkenazi, if this Shas, never mind. And the idea of Hatsi or not Adatit, it's exactly the same. And many, many modern Orthodox people from all kinds trying to vote to a parties that feel comfortable with them without closing themselves in the get of the religious people. And this, now I should say, now we pay the price. Because two months ago, when you look in the map, the whole right, wing, strong right wingers in the religious Zionist movement, they become the, the powerful party in the Knesset. They did it. They did it by very danger and strange coalition between the Tzionut Hadatit, okay, Hadzionut Hadatit, with another party that for me, it's like a racism, clearly racism, Otsma Yehudit, mean Itamar ben the minister, Itamar ben who who lead that party called Otsma Yehudit, that actually, not formally, but practically continue the belief of Meir Kahana uh, ideas. And four years ago, try to think about that. Four years ago, I stood in my synagogue in Jerusalem, and I stood and said to vote to that party, or even give them a place to make a technic coalition with them. It's like vote to Nuremberg law. It's just like that. And now I'm sitting and watching like a murder in, in, a, in, in the situation in Israel, that this is the minister who are actually, pro, he, his, uh, 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 um, his uh, duty is to take care about the police, about the, 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 how power he got, how much power he got. And if we are talking about Bezalel Smotich that you had the privilege to host him in Washington. So what should I say about what he said in Hawara? You know, it's something not acceptable. As a religious people, the Jews, how can we accept that sentence said, let's destroy Hawara, the whole, the whole neighborhood? the whole uh, village. What we accept the other people think about the Torah, about the Jewish people. No, I'm not talking about the whole world around. I'm talking about us, about the Jews. What we are thinking, what kind of Torah we try to bring to Eretz Israel, to Medinat Israel. For me, that is more important than all. All the, the, the voices that here are for me, this is the most important point to bring different Torah to the world. Now, I said the, the religious parties made a strong effort and many, many, many religious Zionists from the main roads 
in, uh, in neighborhoods, in cities, not just in, in, in uh, Judea and Samaria, also in Petah Tikva, Givat Shmuel, all main road of the religious Zionists vote for them, for Smotrich and Ben Gvir. And you say, how it's happened? Do they really believe by that values? What's happened? So I wish to say that when you speak with the people one by one, when you have a small groups of people who say, no, of course not, but we need something much stronger by, uh, by the, the, the right wingers in Israel, and we don't trust the Likud party, we don't trust, and we will, it, you know, in, in Hebrew, you used to say, now, they just speaking like, a, I don't want to say like Nazis, they, they are speaking too loudly about that values, but they're not really, really uh, uh, trying to do that. And I want to say to my friends, be careful, because when they, when they speak like that, someone one day will do very, very difficult act. And I hope, I hope, I have no insurance for that, but I hope that we are now in one of the very danger and black and dark situation in Israel, but we are a believer's people and we know that uh, we, we have the large view of the history of the Jewish people and the tikva, the hope that we, we will go from that point to much stronger situation and again and again. How will be the parties in the religious Zionist next time? I have no idea. I have no idea. I know that I will continue vote to non-religious party. So I am not the, the solution. I am part of the of the problem. Thank you, uh, Rabbi Lau. Um, I uh, on, on that note, on the the hope and on your own voice, you've always you've been for many years a very clear voice uh, uh, opposing uh, uh, the views of people like Smotrich and Ben Gvir, opposing their uh, uh, integration into mainstream politics, uh, and also, as you said, speaking and teaching a different Torah. I think you've said the, to the human dignity is the essence of everything that the Torah uh, teaches. Um, uh, is there... Okay, are you a lonely voice crying out in the wilderness? Are there institutions? Are there movements? Are there places? And I'm thinking also. I'm thinking also that we're a congregation where many of our children go and study uh, in uh, yeshivot and seminaries in Israel. Go on programs in Israel. And many of us, I think, would want uh, our youth to learn the kind of Torah that you teach and not the kind of Torah that, uh, uh, you know, supports Smotrich and Ben Gvir. Where, where, where is their hope? Uh, and is there a concern also about uh, uh, where our children would be educated in Israel, in, in the religious Zionist movement? I, I, you know, it's very hard to mention a specific names of yeshivot and midrashot, but we can say that there are, a, I will say, a path a narrow path of yeshivot and midrashot that keeps strongly the values of modern Orthodox Judaism, mean keeping about human being, human uh, human rights, keeping about the faces of God of each one of the creations, keeping about the many you know regular values that we used to have in uh, in the old days of YU or the Chovave or all that business. We know that we know in states how it's become different, the, the modern Orthodox uh, 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 Institute, what's happened to them, and it's exactly the same in Israel. So I can say, if you want to mention, you know, Yeshivat Gush Etzion, let's, uh, you know, in, in the 80s, 40 years ago, Rav Lichtenstein and Rav Amital, both of them, Aleim HaShalom, um, they created, after a very specific situation in Lebanon, in the first Lebanon war, they started the party named Meimad. I, I hope that everyone here know that. In the 80s, 82, 
82, immediately after Lebanon war. And what was the, the, the moment that they, they did it? It was an act, terrible act in Lebanon called Sabra and Shatila. Sabra and Shatila, it was a pogrom, a lynch that the, the Christians did, the Lebanon Christians did against the, the, the local people and families. It was terrible, terrible. And it was in the area that during the war was under the responsibility of Medinat Israel. So it was a big, big, you know, about hundreds thousand people went to streets to speak against Ariel Sharon, who was the, the Minister of Defense in that days. And I remember, I was soldier in that time. And I remember Rav Lichtenstein spoke in the yeshiva. And I, if, if I want just to mention that, he stood there, think about that, near Arona Kodesh, and said, Yadenu shafchu et adam hazeh. Just think about kind of Rosh Yeshiva, standing in they, our hands, making that blood. It's not anyone else, it's our hands. And then they started the new party called Meimad. But they upset to say Meimad always was very, very little, small group in the religious Zionists. Because many reasons, I can mention the reasons, but always for 40 years, it's always was a very small group keeping the values of human rights, keeping the idea of sharing the Torah with others, keeping the idea of Tzelem Elohim, the image of God, Hashem created each one of us, all that values was very, very small, little, and said to say, it's not, you know, if you look around, you can see members in the parliament, in the Israeli parliament, in many parties, keeping that Torah but they are not as a group of religious members. They are like individuals. And without mention names, you know, they are, they are in, I can say in Likud and in, uh, in, in uh, Yesh Atin and in uh, the, the Benny Gantz party and in, in the Laibo party. You can see each one of them, the team members who believe by that values. And I should say all of them all of them today in the opposition, not in the coalition. I mean, the coalition that we have now in Israel is coalition of the ultra-Orthodox, of the very right-winger national religious, the uh, 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 and include the, the Likud with Netanyahu and his own business. Taking that, you know, that coalition, and you understand what's happened in Israel. Like, and, and now the whole voice that you hear is focusing about the Supreme Court. But I believe that maybe they, they will find the president working hard to find solution for that situation. But this is not the only situation because it's something deeper in the Israeli society between people who believe by liberal values and people who, who try to, to make different, deep different in Israeli, in, in the Jewish country. And this is something that we need to be very, very clear about, that the, 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 the coalition here now, with a very aggressive way, with the Haredi, with the Dati Leumi, with all that business, and Netanyahu with his own needs, it's become danger to Medinat Israel. And specific now, everyone talk about the Supreme Court and how can we continue on to lead a, a democrat country without strong court, with, the, with taking from the court the, the, the power of balance the laws. And this is the, the, the whole business about the relationship between the parliament and the government and the, and the court. So specific, this is the, the, the voice that you hear around. Thank you. 
Uh, I want to remind everyone that you can send uh, questions uh, uh, or uh, sub things that you'd like Rabbi Lau to address uh, to uh, uh, Ruth or to uh, to me in the chat, um, and we'll be uh, glad to uh, to open the conversation uh, that way. Um, Rabbi Lau, uh, you you mentioned uh, uh, the uh, uh, legislative push of the new government. Uh, to uh, effectively change Israel's constitutional structure to to uh, remove, as far as I can see, the only institution that has the authority to restrain uh, the government. Um, uh, and I, I'll, I'll say that this is uh, disturbing to us, obviously, first of all, as people who are very concerned for Israel, but I think also for all, all of us as Americans, it's it's a fundamentally... Uh, you know, uh, foreign or, or or very disturbing concept. Uh, our, our identity as Americans is rooted in limiting, you know, free is in democracy and limiting the power of government. Uh, uh, and so um, I, I would like to hear your, your thoughts on this and how how is this couched in, in, in terms of Judaism? What is the debate in a Jewish sense? over this Supreme Court uh, uh, legislation? You know, I, I, it's, first of all, it's it's really very complicated <laughs> to, to explain all the pieces of that com co conflict. I will try to do it very fast. First of all, you, you should ask yourself, or each one of us should, should ask, how it's happened that the Dati, all the religious, become against the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, more than all, keep the rights of the minorities. This is the most important thing the Supreme Court do. They, 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 they actually, they limited the power of the, of the government and the parliament, and they keep strongly the rights of the minorities. Now, the Haredi, for many, many years, be, know how they need the Supreme Court for their own needs as a minority. The Arabs know that, and the religious Zionists know that. The truth is, I will say it very clear, very open, the truth is that what motivates many, many of the religious, and I will do a, a, a difference between the ultra-Orthodox, the Haredim, and the more, and, and the religious Zionists, the, 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 the Tzionodotit. The, the Haredi have a long time business against the Supreme Court because they feel that all, all laws that they trying to, 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 to bring to the front of the society culturally is a secular uh, interpretations of law. Mean they don't trust that the people, the judges in the Supreme Court have the the, the, the mind, or if you want, the, 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 the heart of a Jewish uh, state. They do, the, and if you remember it or not, uh, 25 years ago was the unbelievable demonstration against the Supreme Court, Haredi demonstration. About 100,000 Haredi went to the streets in Jerusalem, packed Jerusalem, closed it, and all was against the Supreme Court. Why? Because something, no one remember why, but it was clearly that they feel that the Supreme Court not care about the rights of the Haredi as a minority. This is one voice. The religious Zionists in the other side cannot forget that the Supreme Court in the disengagement days of Gush Katif didn't help them as a minority. It was a very aggressive day of the uh, government. Again, Ariel Sharon, now not as a, 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 as a prime minister, and Ariel Sharon with the parliament, he somehow, he, he monopolized the parliament to be that the, the majority will vote for the disengagement. And the Supreme Court didn't stop it. And the religious Zionist people cannot forget that. 
And if you ask me, that is the point that the religious Zionists fight so strong to take the power from the Supreme Court. Mean, it's like what's called nekama. They, they, they really want to give back and, and to show now we are with the power and we will put you down. And this is terrible. It's terrible because who are thinking about the real needs of the minorities, about disabilities people, about the Arabs in East Jerusalem or all around? Who will keep that rights? Thinking about a state, a democracy state, Without that power of the Supreme Court, we understand it's too dangerous. Nekama, Ned, Ned helped me by the chat to say, <laughs> Nekama, it's a, it's, a, it's a Jewish word, it's not in Hebrew. <laughs> nekome, Nekome. Um, uh... Yes, I mean, unfortunately, not 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 all of us, uh, you know, have Hebrew or or Yiddish, um, uh, but uh, um, I, I've received several questions, and uh, uh, both on the Supreme Court, but also one of them that I think you you've really brought up. Uh, from what I understood, you're saying that many in the religious Zionist community were uh, uh, angered. By the evacuation of the settlements in Gush Katif in 2005 in, in Gaza and in the Northern West Bank, and felt that their rights were trampled on and no one, the Supreme Court didn't protect them, no one protected them. Um, exactly. Uh, so I've received a couple of questions really about the, uh, the connection, uh, the deep connection of religious Zionism or the religious Zionist movement and the settlements. Uh, and and the, the the politics of, uh, uh, of of the settlements, the move to annex the West Bank or or some of it. Um, one question uh, phrased it very well. It said, "Is there a religious Zionism outside of the settlement movement?" Uh, if there is, or people, I, I should say, in the settlements, there is about half a million Jewish people all around mean Judea and Samaria, all around about half of 400,000 or half a million Jewish people. And maybe 100,000 of them is Haredi, from Beitar Elit, from other places. And all other is between Mesorati, mean traditionally, or religious Zionist. So this is the map. But you have another same number of religious Zionists in the regular cities in Israel. I mean, if you're talking about Tel Aviv area, talking about Jerusalem area, talking about uh, all rounds, there are many, many, many religious Zionists who uh, by family or by friends or by ideology feel that the, 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 the idea that we, the Jewish people should, should keep should keep Hebron, should, be, should keep uh, uh, Nablus, Shechem, should keep all uh, the territory of Yehuda and Samaria. This is part of the ideology. Mean the, the beliefs of return back to Zion. We are the Jewish people. We had the dream all the history. And when we are talking we didn't think about Tel Aviv. We thought about Samaria, we talk about Judea. And for us, it's a pra, it's a part of return back to Zion. Even the people from what I said before of Lichtenstein, Rav Amital, Meimat, they built their own yeshiva in Gush Etzion. Gush Etzion, it's part of the settlements. But of course, it's more consensus. It's not extremely inside the very, very, uh, 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 a, a Arabs area, but but still, still, it's not the 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 the, the, the Israeli state before sixty seven. It's after sixty seven. So it's very complicated to say that. But I should say the majority of the religious Zionists in Israel, except the idea of living in Judea and Samaria, and the, the machloke, the argument inside the religious Zionist is how far we should go in that idea. 
For example, the R group, I, I, I cannot count how many, that say we need to be all over. In Hebron, mean Hebron, you know that it's an Arab city. We are talking about Arab city with 100,000 Arabs inside. How many Jews lived in Hebron? I'm not talking about the neighborhood name Kiryat Arba. Kiryat Arba is a different place. Talking about the city on Hebron. How many Jews lived there? Include all, include 300 boys who learned there in yeshiva. We are talking about less than thousand people. Include all, less than thousand people. And we are talking about city with at least 300,000 Arabs. So then you ask, so the, the, it's a conflict. Should the Jews live there or not? It's an argument inside the religious Zionists. And the pioneers push the whole, the whole party deeply, deeply, strongly inside to that, to that area. Exactly the same the other side. In the other side, I mean, we are talking about road number 60. Road number 60 in south is Hebron, in north is Shechem, Nablus. And, and between, it's all Judea and Samaria. All, it's road number 60, and the Hebrew or Jewish name of that road, it's called the path of our uh, father, Derech Avot. Meanwhile, because Abraham went, uh, walked, uh, and Jacob walked, uh, and this is the way, this is the, the way of mountains between Harei Hebron and Harei Shomron. And this is all our history. So I remember myself in the, in the, in the, in the high school, in the 70s, mid 70s, we all went to what called Sebastia. Why? Because we returned back to Zion. We went to Sebastia because it's our land. And no one told us that so many Arabs lived there. We, 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 need, we didn't see them. We didn't see even one family. We just thought about the land and returned back, like a family returned back to the home. And now it's a conflict. So I should say clearly, I am in the minority side of the religious Zionist uh, uh, people. But I think that we need to see our neighbors and to find the way how they will stay in their own homes. It's a very complicated situation. Uh, that is uh, uh, certainly, certainly clear. Um, and uh, I think thank you for uh, bringing us back all the way to the, the origins of uh, uh, the, the movement and uh, the 1970s and how um, uh, it is, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's been a, a, a journey in this direction. Um, I, something that is happening now that maybe hasn't uh, in the past is the, uh, the protest movement that's erupted uh, in the in the streets against the uh, uh, judicial reform, as it's called, or the judicial revolution, um, what do you see happening there? Who is uh, who, who is leading this, and are there uh, are there religious leaders who are part of this movement? Okay, it's it's exactly the same. It's like going and understand the map, because if you remember, for many 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 years. Uh, we have in, in a, what we called Yom Yerushalayim, the day of Jerusalem, celebrate the day that in the, in the Six Days War, uh, Yerushalayim become free, mean or unity, as you wish to, to say. And there is in, it's, the Hebrew date is Kaf Chet Be'yar, and it's a holiday, it's officially, an option holiday in, a day in Israel, mean what? Option day that you can take that day as an employee, you can take it at the, the day of celebrate. Celebrate what? Yom Yerushalayim, the day of Jerusalem. Day of Jerusalem means the Chag, the holiday of Yerushalayim Ashlema, Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim Shlema mean what? That we are very happy about this, the, what's happened in, 60, in, in Six Days' War. 
Now it's become after, you know, after 50 years, it's a, 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 if you look around in Israel and you ask who celebrate that day, <laughs> who keep that day? You know, singing Hallel in synagogue, dancing in the street, and more than all, more than all afternoon of that day, dancing with flags, Kachol Avan, you know, with the flags of states, dancing in the street between the, the new or the west side of, the, of Jerusalem to the Kotel, from the east side, from the Arab area. So it's just, just, just religious Zionist and specific talking about movement, Bnei Akiva. This is, it's, I, I'm, I'm, instead of crying, I'm laughing that it's a, instead do something from the whole nation. For many years, it's become a hug of the religious Zionist and more than all, it was signed by but what they called always every year, called Rikud de Galim, the dancing with the flags. And it's very problematic act because it's dancing in the very, very tidy Arab uh, uh, neighborhoods in the old city. Never mind, it's, it's something, it's a symbol. And because that, something happened to the flag in Israel. Mean, if the religious Zionists took the flag, so we, who is we? The Israelis, the liberal, secular, the, 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 the regular people, there are no religious, no, no Haredi, no religious Zionists. We are the, the Israelis, the Israelis who are believed by liberal values. We left the flag. The Datile Umi took the flag. And now, miraculously, Mamash, like a miracle. You can see in the streets for two months already, eight weeks already, every, every Saturday night, and someday, sometimes during the week, thousand, thousand people with families, adults, kids, going to the streets with Degel Kachol Lavan. And what they try to say, we are not giving up. We, for, for too many years, we gave up. We gave up to the Haredi. We gave up to the, to the, to the, to the, the Tilumi. But the, the, the blue and white flag, it's ours. We are not giving up the flag of Medinat Israel. And it's a miracle. It's something if you can see something very optimist for the what's happened in Israel now, it's just about that. That the Israelis go to the streets, but, but not once, again and again and again, and said, we are not give up. It's 75 years celebrate Medinat Israel, and we fight about the face of that state. We will not let it happen to, to, clear, to, to color that state in, in a dark a, a, a color. We will keep the values of democracy. And you can listen in the streets. Now, you ask about the Dati in the, in, in the streets. There is, I should say there is, but no, it, it's very complicated. For, first of all, to, in the main places, there are a few I can say, I can talk about myself, my kids, my grandchildren, we are there. We are there, but again, talking about Meimad party, we are very, very little. But what's happened in the last three weeks that the people like Yeshivat Haaretzion, Gush Etzion, people like uh, the son of Rav Lichtenstein, people like, in, you know, the, the right wingers in the religious Zionist, but people who care about the relationship between secular and religious, they also start going to the streets. Some of them separated, but the, the message is don't continue on with that laws without talking all together. Asking the president to lead that and really shout to the to the 
to the leader in the parliament, please stop, stop that act. And to hear that voices from the religious Zionist people, rabbis, teachers, and some, you know, people, it's something that start happening. The majority of the rich Zionists feel confused. They are not going because I think many of them do believe that the Supreme Court need to be less strong, as I explained before, because the disengagement days. So they do think that the Supreme Court need to change and they don't go to the streets because they feel that it's too aggressive for them from the left side. So it's, I think the majority of the religious Zionists still are not in the streets. Thank you. Um, I, I have, I should, I should say, I have seen images that there have been, uh, the protests happen in many different cities, but I've also seen images of uh, uh, at least a few, uh, maybe a few hundred people uh, in Gush Etzion, uh, which you've spoken about in uh, that. Exactly, that, you know, exactly. Protesting against uh, the current judicial post. Um, I have uh, uh, a question um, from Rabbanit uh, Aliza Sperling, uh, really a, 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 an excellent question. Um, she said, I would love for Rav Benny to address what is missing from religious education that is leading people to act this way. And you've described, you know, the the the, the march uh, on Jerusalem Day, or uh, obviously Hawara would be the very extreme example. But uh, 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 you know, for all that, what is missing? Uh, yeah. education? It's, it's a very very deep and uh, very sensitive question. Um, I I will say openly, the sixty the, the six days war in sixty seven change Israel for many, many aspects. More than all is about the uh, settlements, about Judea and Samaria, more than all, but not just, but more than all. And the religious Zionists from that time moved themselves to be the pioneers at what we call the Chalutzim to make, continue the dreams of the, the first, the, 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 the the Zionim, the, the first Zionist movement from the hundred years ago. Mean if you understand the map in the in the parties or in the in the groups of the old Zionist movement, the majority was secular. Talking about Ben Gurion, Moshe Dayan, talking about all the leaders in the beginning of the state or beginning of the Zionist movement from the from the beginning of the twentieth century. All, all, all was from the secular, secular parties. Never mind if it's a, if it's a socialism or labor or, or liberal. Never mind, but it was secular. Where was the place of the dati, the religious? If you are Haredi, you are just in your yeshiva in your corner. If you was religious Zionist, you was like a minority in the majority state. Mean. I, if you remember the, 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 the uh, symbol that Amos Oz used to say, that it's like a big, big train that the driver is like Ben Gurion, someone, a leader from the secular world, and where the place of the Dati, the religious people, back, back, back in the train, they have a, a, a cafeteria. And the the mashgiach kashrut, the kosher and keeper in the in the in the coffee house in the in the train was the dati. Mean no one count the religious as the real leaders. Sixty seven make the difference, and the dati leumi become pioneers after the Yom Kippur War in seventy three seventy four. The, the, the people, the leaders from the old time, mean the, the Labour Party, the, they become very low. It was a very, um, I, I should say, um, the, the, the atmosphere in Israel was very hard after, after Yom Kippur War. If you remember the poem that Nomi Shemer brought to the world, Lu Yehi, 
let it be like the Beatles. So what the net, what the words that she wrote it drew, it was just then in the Yom Kippur war, she said, I see just cloudy in the all around. Cloudy, it was terrible time. And then she said, let it be, lu yehi, lu yehi. Now in that time, that was exactly the time that the religious Zionists said, okay, if all around are so, uh, uh, so uh, upset and so uh, depression and so, we will lead the, we will be the pioneers, we will lead. And they almost used to say, they moved from the back of the train to the front. And they say, we will be the drivers and we will continue. And that is the time that the religious Zionists yes, said, we will make the difference in that state. And in many aspects, for example, you know the yeshivot tzioniot, the religious Zionist yeshivot started just in the end of the 70s. They, they had few, you know, Karen de Yavne, yeah, they have one here, one there, but the massive numbers of what called yeshivot hester, who make a combination between the yeshiva time and the army time, started just then. It was, and the massive, massive numbers of students went to be there. And then Bnei Akiva changed. Bnei Akiva become more aggressive about Torah, more extremely about Eretz Israel, and the values become very, very strong. And then after, you know, after many years, you find it, you find the, the fruits that, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not a party. It's a movement that the majority, majority believe by Eretz Israel Shlema. I mean, we need to keep all part of Eretz Israel without giving even one centimeter to the Arabs. Very, very extremely right wingers. They believe by Torah, believe by separation between men and girls, men and women, and and, and many, many other aspects, and. Thinking about the, the the modern Orthodox that you uh, 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 you you saw in states in the 60s, 70s, it's exactly the same in Israel. But the face of religious Zionists become extremely right about Eretz Israel, and the the caring about the nation, about the people, about seeing faces about be a Jewish people who understand that you care about minorities just like you care about you. This is something that we need to work hard. I say to Abanita Lisa, this is one of the big, big challenges of rabbis in Israel, to bring back the, 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 the idea of Jewish state mean what? mean seeing the face of the other. This is this should be the title of Jewish state. See faces and minorities should feel equally to all other citizens. For me, this is the most important challenge in, in our period. And I know that the time is over and I apologize because so many other things to talk. And I'm sorry that it's, too quick, it's it's move. We um, we are grateful for your time and uh, and for sh uh, sharing uh, so much uh, insight with with us. You've given us much to think about, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, you know I think it's very clear that uh, this uh, this struggle is going on, and we uh, I think we will have much to talk about again in the future but uh i hope that uh i i it's i hope that you've also enjoyed our questions i hope we'll have a chance to speak with you again uh thank you everyone for sending questions thank you maharat ruth uh for convening this uh, uh and uh, uh thank you all we're hoping to have more conversations of this kind um uh and uh so we will uh, we'll update everyone uh, and I think we can all take Rav Benny's words as inspiration as we continue to uh, grapple with these uh, the very historic uh, and difficult times in Israel. Thank you so much. Bye.